Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of Film Freaks with a Z. That's right, the podcast all about movie movies with a Z. If you want to be edgy. Uh, Today, not much to say before the episode starts. Just uh, keep rolling in the film recommendations. We're always looking for more. Uh, The list is getting pretty full now. So we're, we're very happy to have a good amount of people who are thinking of us, you know? Anyways, uh, if you want to uh, recommend a movie, just either comment on the latest episode of Film Freaks, the YouTube version, or you can send us an email at ff.filmfreaks, with a Z, at gmail.com. Alright, let's just, uh, let's get right into it. Let's introduce ourselves. I am Yemi the Ferret, a.k.a. Yemi. Who am I here with? Hello, it is me, Gritty Waffle, a.k.a. Nick. And it is I, Tay Mation, also just Tay. <laughs> we are a man down today, Coco Gamer, a.k.a. Coco, a.k.a. The Yeater, is unfortunately not with us today. But we also have a special guest today, so we, it kind of fills us out. Um, who are we here specially with? Hi, uh, I'm Odom K, aka Odom, and uh, I'm just a random artist. <laughs> yeah, you do um, art streams, and you do a little bit of gaming. Uh, he also he just completed Hollow Knight. Ooh, that's a good one. Enjoy that. Yeah, totally fun, super addicting. And I also just uh, finished up uh, Resident Evil Two as well. Ah, uh, yes. How many underwear changes was it? Uh, three. Dude, at least sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we're happy to have you on the podcast, Odom, to give your thoughts about today's movie, which is, uh, well, it was recommended by me, myself, and I. It's uh, The Hobbit from 1977. It was directed by Jules Bass and Arthur Rankin Jr. The synopsis is Bilbo Baggins' The Hobbit, which is minding his own business, when his occasional visitor, Gandalf the Wizard, drops in one night. One by one, a whole group of dwarves drops in, and before he knows it, Bilbo has joined their quest to reclaim their kingdom, taken from them by the evil dragon, Smaug. The only problem is that Gandalf has told the dwarves that Bilbo is an expert burglar. But he isn't. Uh, The main cast of it is Orson Bean, who plays Bilbo, John Huston, Cyril Richard, Brother Theodore and Richard Boone, to name a few. So, where I wanted to start off this conversation is, um, y'all know I'm a sucker for good soundtracks, and I think this movie does a very good job of having that fantasy soundtrack to it. Especially the song with the dwarves at the beginning, continuously stuck in my head. (laughs) (laughs) I agree with you. I really like, because, you know, in the actual book... A lot of those were songs were written out, you know, but you just read them. Um, so I really like what they did to turn them into actual songs. I thought they did a really good job. Yeah, I, I, a lot of a lot of the songs are memorable in this movie, um, especially. Uh, I mean, obviously the the Goblin song uh, has a theme throughout the movie, as as well as the uh, the dwarves and the, like the it's like the Misty Mountain song was because it, it's like that somber tone song that kind of comes up every so often. Um, it's very interesting, very interesting soundtrack to the movie. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it got me kind of, you know, tapping my foot a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it did make the movie more enjoyable, and I did really, I do really agree with you on uh, the soundtrack. Odom has a lot of uh, song requests in his streams. Um, ever hear any Hobbit songs uh, in your streams? Right <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually haven't, but I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, a lot of the songs were, were definitely catchy uh, in this Hobbit movie, and it's very like well sung as well. Like the vocals were lovely, and I wouldn't imagine the the lyrics would be you know sung that way after reading the book a little bit. You know? Yeah, yeah. very creative. Yeah, it was a very folksy '70s sounding. Absolutely, it, it worked. It worked for it. When you say 70s, 70s sounding, uh, do you mean like just how the way it's recorded or? Uh, no, just the the um, 
the folksy, like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. There's a lot of folksy songs from the 70s that sound very similar to that. And I, I think if this movie had been made in, like, the 80s or 90s, it would have sounded completely different. With, oh, in the 80s, really? there could have been, like, synth, you know, and stuff like that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there would have been synth, and it would have been weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I... I uh... I I watched the trailer for this before I recommended it, and that danged, you know, Bilbo Baggins' song at the beginning is still stuck in my head since that day, and I don't know if I'm gonna forget it anytime soon. But it's such a cut. It's such a catchy tune. It really is. Is it the one by Leonard Nimoy or sung by Leonard Nimoy? Uh, no, that's I think that's the overall, like arching song. It's the one that the dwarves yeah. sing while they're cleaning the dishes. Oh, okay, you know. gotcha. That one, yeah. Oh, right. You break the pots. Yeah. That's what Bilbo yeah. Baggins hates. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys have read the book. I read the book uh, a long time ago, uh, back when I was in middle school, I think. Obviously, I don't remember much about it, but um, compared to the what I remember from it, and compared to the new Hobbit trilogy... I was actually really astonished at how much closer this movie is to the whole trilogy of movies for The Hobbit that Peter Jackson did. Well, I mean, cause I mean, I've read the book bunch, and like there's even this movie, there's things I was noticing for like, well, that that's not how it happened in the book. Um, like they followed the book, but they also definitely like abridged the book. So like the first scene is. You know, even talking about in the synopsis, like, oh, the dwarves show up one by one. It's like, no, they didn't. <laughs> Gandalf is just there. It's like, hey, Bilbo, here's some dwarves. And then they're just all there. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the book, you know, he put a mark on the door and then the dwarves showed up one by one. So little things like, I mean, obviously, I know they did it to make it runtime shorter, you know. Right. But. Well, that's the thing. I feel like the first half of this movie sped by pretty fast uh, really um they didn't really stop to uh like do major parts in the story until i would say probably the part where uh, bilbo rescues the dwarves from the spiders yeah. and you get into the part with uh you know Gollum and and smaug and stuff like that and the movie kind of elongates those scenes because those are the best scenes in the movie are when, you know, he's talking to Smog, when he's talking to Gollum, uh, the, the Battle of the Five Armies is a pretty, pretty nice, uh, ter- you know, events in the movie. But before that, the movie just kind of was like speeding by and I was like, okay, so they did the troll thing really quickly. Uh, Gandalf yeah. saves them. Uh, <laughs> you know, they did this really quickly. They're floating down the barrels now. They, they said it was a week <laughs> that they were stuck in the, in the Wood Elves dungeon and it's like, it seems like it took like five seconds for for Bilbo to get the key and, and rush out of there. Yeah. I mean, comparing this to, like, the new trilogy that came out, uh, you know, within a few years, might might have been longer now. Um, I mean, I feel like the new movies, uh, they were more for, like, showing, flashing, while this one probably followed the book. I mean, I didn't read the book. Don't hate me, guys. Um, <laughs> I did, but like- I, yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't read the book, but based off of what you guys are saying, it follows the book more. And, I mean, I don't know. The new trilogy was just so, like, iffy, and this one was actually fun to watch. Yeah. Well, that is the one thing about, like, the books um, for The Hobbit. Because, like, even the new movies technically followed the book pretty well, then they just but they just added too much to it. Yeah. Versus I mean, this one took stuff away from it um, to streamline it, the, the, to make it three movies they kept adding stuff you know grabbing different lore from tolkien stuff to fill it but it, in the books like the hobbit it, you know it's short and it reads quick and it's fun and entertaining like reading lord of the, the lord of the ring books is boring like they are not really good books well yeah it, it takes a lot of um it, it's kind of like a school book right because you're learning all about the elvish language and you're learning yeah. all about this lore and they have to explain it over and over and over again so you remember yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and then like they'll just he goes off on weird tangents in lord of the rings and the sun goes off on pages where it's like here's this fox who walked by let's follow this fox's life for for some reason for his whole life pages. Yeah. yeah and you're like 
why was this needed? I didn't care about this stupid fox. And I love foxes, but come on, I don't need to read about foxes when I'm reading a book about some hobbits. <laughs> hobbits and dwarves. Don't forget about the dwarves. Uh, and elves. You know. And elves. And... <laughs> yeah. Well, this like this was Lord of the Rings. Hobbit didn't do that. Hobbit was good. It was quick and easy. It was an easy read. It's a fun read. Yeah. Lord of the Rings is it's bogged down with a lot of stuff. Like the overall story is great, but the books themselves are just bogged down with details and randoms. So that's just, it's not as good. So I mean, that's just my opinion. But right. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I tend to agree with that. Um, I tried reading the Hobbit books. I rem- uh, not the Hobbit books. Uh, the Lord of the Rings you know, trilogy in, in the book format. Uh, because as I said last time, I, I was, I mean, Nick and I were both huge fans of Lord of the Rings when we were younger. Uh, I would say yeah. probably around middle school was when I was really, really into it. And at that time I did not have the attention span to read the books. I remember flipping yeah. through the return of the King and I found the part where uh, Frodo was caught in, you know, Shelob's cave with, with Sam I just remember trying to read it, and I would read, like, a paragraph, and it would be really interesting, you know, the sp- talking about the spiders and what they're doing, and then all of a sudden it was, like, an inner monologue that Frodo was having while he was cocooned, and I'm like, all right, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> so, this movie definitely, obviously, it came way before The Hobbits, the new Hobbit movies, but they, right. they learned, hey, you know what, less is more. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it really is. I mean, when you look at this movie, it's a 77-minute movie, and it hits all those major points that I really wanted it to hit, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Probably my favorite section of this movie is the part with... It's 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 tough. It's tearing me to pieces. I, I Do I like the part with Gollum more, or do I like the part with Smaug more? And when oh, I, yeah, when I a- think about it... I gotta say, the part with Smaug was much more... I don't know if it was more intense, but it was just much more interesting to me than the part with Gollum, even though they're both really great scenes in the movie. Uh, don't get me wrong. Both animation-wise and, and just sound you know, sound effects and stuff like that, uh, voice acting. Um, but I liked the, the part with Smaug a lot better because it kind of showed off his character, you know? Um, and even though we saw a lot of character from Gollum, don't get me wrong, I just I felt like Smaug's part was a lot cooler. What do you guys think? I mean, uh, a... Smog's a dragon, so that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. And, okay, well, I, was, I mean, yeah, it's hard. Um, I think Smog overall, I mean, because <sighs> Golem, from Lord of the Ring movies, the new ones, Golem's just too iconic that any other iteration of him, you should go, that's yeah, not as good. <laughs> True. And not to get like Smog in the New Hobbit movies was great too. Like I, I enjoyed that performance, but it's not like so iconic. Yeah, it's not so iconic that oh, there can be no other, there can be no other Smog. It's just like yeah, no, it's good Smog, but there can be other Smogs. <laughs> but Andy Circus Golem, you're like no, there can be no other Golems. That's the best Golem, in my opinion. Again, <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think, Odom? Uh, well, I, I totally agree with the uh, with the Golem in the newer Lord of the Rings for sure. But like with this, um, the nineteen seventy seven Smog over the the Smog of the the newer trilogy. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think the nineteen seventy seven kind of takes the cake because he uh, the character is just so chill, and then all of a sudden gets so upset because of this this cocky thief that he can't see. And like, mm-hmm. I just love how the animation works with with you know. You know, he's not really actually shooting eye lasers, but that's what it looks like, right? It's like, yeah. you, it's like his line of sight or his vision. And I don't know, it's just, it was an interesting interact, uh, interaction. And it was also nice seeing um, Bilbo's uh, personality kind of kind of change, honestly. It, it was weird. He, he used to be so timid and everything, but until he, I mean, when he found that ring and he's, he, he put it on and he's right in front of a, a spoopy, spoopy dragon, he's... He's kind of a douche, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was a good douche, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good, a lovable douche. A Pardon lovable me. douche. Yes. The one thing that kind of confused me at that same part is um, when Smaug first, you know, notices that uh, Bilbo's there. He's like, "Take whatever you want. There's enough to go around." Yeah. And then Bilbo's like, "Well, I'm just here to look at you." And then once Bilbo's like getting ready to leave and take the one thing from him, Smog goes crazy. It's like, wait, wait a minute. At the beginning, you were like, take anything. <laughs> what, what the heck? What, what changed? 
I, I want to say it's it's Bilbo's like character, how how arrogant he was. His douchiness for... got his... small. <laughs> douchiness. That was yes. not the lovable part. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was, man. His character changed a lot, and I I really like that. I like that dynamic, you know. Yeah, it's it's nice to see a movie where a character's personality change and all that is kind of um is worth it i guess you would say like we were talking about groundhog's day last episode and most of us weren't a hundred percent with bill murray's character change but in this movie i could definitely see him do a more gradual change obviously when the smog park came it it, it bursts into fruition but you can definitely see him slowly changing could be you know being less of the scaredy hobbit to more of the you know even though he sat out the entire battle of the five armies i mean he was ready to go in there and kick ass <laughs> yeah dude. not to mention um, he saved the dwarves twice right yeah and he even kind of like yeah, yeah he no, brought that on the dwarves no you're fine i'm sorry yeah, so technically did he did it more than that they cut it from the movie but like he's the reason they the trolls never ate the dwarves it wasn't i mean gandalf shows up at the end but really, Bilbo had the trolls arguing all night, and that's why they didn't realize it was day. Mm. Oh. <laughs> but that's cut from the movie, or from this movie, which that was one thing that kind of bugged me. It was like, why are you going to do Bilbo dirty like that? That was like his first <laughs> big achievement, was he made the trolls just argue all night until the day, you know, until morning. Did they do that a lot? Have uh, Gandalf be the deus ex machina when he wasn't that in the book? No, he was a lot in the books, too, but... Like, I can't remember. If, I think he still shows up and brings the day slightly earlier, but I don't know. Or just brings, shows up and announces, oh, it's a day, by the way. And that's when they're like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Gandalf um, comes by. With, he's like, you, you trolls do know that the time change happened last week. So that means that. <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit. An hour early. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Coco yeah. had brought up a point, going back to Smog for a second. Uh, that the dragon is extremely weak if it can be killed with one shot. Now, yes and no. One, uh, you had to take a really skilled archer like the the gentleman was who who shot Smog out of the sky. Bard. Yeah, the bard. No, his name, his his name bard. was Bard. Right. Yeah, okay. his name's Bard. <laughs> um, and two, I mean, it showed like it was a very, 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 very small scale that had come out of of his armor plating um and i think I, I think this is a classic you know because I, I remember reading this in the book and i remember it stuck with me because it's such a classic like part of the book where it's just like it's a, it, you got a one in a hundred shot to do this and just random random guys like all right i got this guys hold on <laughs> now <laughs> it's funny, it's, if i remember right I, and i may not but I think in the books it was Bard's grandpa, like or great grandpa or ancestor. I don't know how far back it was, um, who actually shot the scale off Smog. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so like the archery thing is passed down. So they're all good archers, um, especially when they have those black arrows, which are super strong arrows. Um, but yeah, so the grandpa knocked the scale off, and then Bard finished it off. If I remember right. Yeah, I feel they like left... they. Oh, sorry, Odom, go ahead. I was, I was just. They left that out of the 1977 thing, right? Like the lore with with his grandpa or grandfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they left that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bard oh. had barely had a part in in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he was very tiny. Information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what'd you say, Nick? I said that would have been good information to have oh, in the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you guys also notice that the angle that the archers are shooting were like straight? in front of them and then the <laughs> arrows would go into this guy <laughs> yes i mean funny. it's 1977 relax <laughs> animation was hard okay it still is hard well Not yeah sure. like yes true i'm still gonna i'm still gonna knock it for that though <laughs> that's fair that's fair i see what you did there knock all right mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> speaking of the animation style um one of the reasons why uh, I invited Odom onto the podcast was because of the fact that he is an artiste, and I was I was I was hoping to pick his brain about the animation style and uh, did it is it is this animation style going to inspire anything in the future on the channel? 
Um, well, I, I mean, I, I do want to get into animation. I am, you know, by no means any expert in animation. I've only messed with certain 2D kind of animation, like the old traditional, you know, frame by frame, and also a little bit of digital. But this kind of animation, yeah, I mean, it, it's... I, <laughs> it's older, right? It's harder. Yeah. It, it takes longer. And uh, what's so crazy about this type of animation, the older animations, is how detailed it is. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get over the fact that the artists or the animators, uh, they added all the knuckles in the hands. <laughs> like, <laughs> they even showed like the the bones and everything. It was so cool. Like it was nice. The calf muscles and everything. And I couldn't imagine how how hard that that was to animate. Very um, hard. <laughs> Yeah, super hard, right? And yeah. it is inspiring. So I do want to do something like that. Would, I feel would... like um, anime is like not in that depth anymore. Like, is that all right to say? I mean, like, I feel like like you were saying, you know, the calf muscles and the knuckles on the hands. Like, I feel like nowadays those are just overlooked. Uh, it depends on the animation or, like, you know, the, the show. Um, okay. There are still some that do that. Um, but yeah, a lot of, especially, I mean, especially if you've seen a lot of like kid shows, you know, like Steven Universe or something. Yeah, those are more simplistic, you know, designs. Um, but I mean, you still get a lot of that with like some Disney animation. Well, when they do 2D animation, which they don't really do anymore. Um, and there's a few animates that do that as well. They're like super detailed like that. Okay. Yeah, it's all about the art style. It's all yeah. about the the art direction for sure. And I mean, if they have time constraints and and whatnot, you can you can see the details, the level of details being taken away. Like you even see you can see that in like animes today, right? <laughs> like sometimes they can be super nice, super detailed, very fluid, and then all of a sudden, you know, you got like some filler. It looks like garbage. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like they they spend their budget on the high action sequences, and then you go, ah, hey, we'll just let the the C studio handle these episodes, and then you <laughs> the get C you know <laughs> get people like not even doing walk cycles; they're just you tell just gliding across with a slight <laughs> bump. You know, easy stuff to do. Yeah, you know, you can you can see that even in like um, I'll go back to like Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh. You can see which seasons they had a higher budget on. Um, especially because okay. I I grew up watching Yu-Gi-Oh, and when you watch the first season, like the animation is definitely not as detailed. There's things oh, yeah. that you can tell are different from scene to scene, just from like the proportions of the characters and stuff like that. And then you go to like season two, and it's like way more detailed. And you keep going through the seasons, you can see how the budget gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, uh, some animes even like they you can see it in. Like, just one season, like, the same season, but just, like, the arc. Like, the animation will be shitty, and then suddenly it's like, oh, well, here's this awesome epic fight scene. We This is where we put all our money in this animation budget. And then suddenly it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And this, obviously, for this movie, going back to this movie, I guess, since we're talking about this movie. <laughs> uh, obviously, all their budget was just the whole movie, so. Um, but there were still a few random scenes I could see in there where... Um, they cut corners on the animation, had, you know, characters just kind of, like, slide in and stuff like that. But overall, yeah, it was really, it was done very well. I think out of all the things that you could be disappointed about in this movie, it is the Battle of the Five Armies just kind of being, yes. like, a, a yeah. big dust pile with, like, <laughs> slight animations of, like, sword fighting and stuff like that. Yeah, and, that was a cut. Yeah. <laughs> that it, was a corner cut. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially when that the eagles filler. came in and they just had like little black dots above it yeah. going up and down. I was like, come on. <laughs> I do remember that, yeah. <clears throat> well, then like you would occasionally get like a shot of one guy, you see a sword slice and then like a star animation on one, you know, someone who's supposedly hit and then they're dead. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was a weird thing about the death animations too. Like they never showed like someone actually getting stabbed or anything like that. So I wasn't sure if, like, especially the scene with the spiders where the, um, you know, Bilbo does the sting move and, you know, he, 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 it seems like he kills the one, but then the same voice actor voices the spider later on and you go, wait, did he kill him or did he scare him away? Because when, when you, they would strike with a sword, like, the, the, the screen would spin and it would be like a yeah. kaleidoscope yeah. effect and I was like, does anyone actually even die, really die in this movie or is it the... What's well, it's on? a kid's movie. <laughs> it's a kid's movie's for the 70s. I need some blood, hey, Tay. I, I... Not the you 70s know, kids. blood wasn't allowed. <laughs> See, Johnny, this is how you stab someone. 
So, uh, so you know, Tay or Odom or Nick, you might be more well versed in uh, Bilbo's sword than I am. But if I remember correctly from the newer, you know, the the Lord, you know, the Return of the King and stuff like that. So, wasn't that sword supposed to only glow when orcs were around, or am I remembering wrong? Yeah, it glows when orcs are, or orcs are goblins, either one. But yeah. So why was it glowing when spiders were around? Uh, because this movie decided to make it glow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And technically, enough. Bilbo didn't come up with the name Sting on his own either. One of the spiders tried to get him, and he he stabbed it. And he's like, "Ah, oh, this one's got a sting or a stinger." He's like, "Ah, oh, that's a good name for it. I'll call you Sting." <laughs> and this one in the movie, you know, he was just like, he's hit the spider and ran off. He's like, "I'll call you Sting." It's like, okay, there was. I mean, you just had to have one line of, oh, this one, this guy's got a stinger. <laughs> but whatever. Again, I'm nitpicking here. <laughs> nitpicking and biased, Tay. Yes. <laughs> um, I, so, so we were all talking about, like, the impactful parts of the movie. You were mentioning, um, I think, the trolls, Gollum, um, interaction with Smaug. I... I really wanted one of the focal points to be that huge war. Like, I really did. Um, yeah. it, it, like you said, it's not supposed to be a flashy story or whatever, but that part was, like, one of the only flashiest parts. And I, I was super disappointed about, like, like how they animated, like, like what you guys said. Like that two, three frame animation of lines and dots. <laughs> and then, again, you said when the, when the eagles came in and how there were just dots in the sky. I, I thought... I thought like the animation and the consist yeah, I thought the animation and the quality was consistent up until that that war of five. Um it was kind of a letdown to tell you the truth. The opposite of anime where they blew their budget on all the <laughs> ba- before battle stuff and then went, Oh, well we've we've got five dollars. Can we can we do this battle scene for five dollars? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, did you guys feel that way too? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. I, I you know I I wish that you could see you know the different factions in the war fighting. I I wish you could see the you know the orcs not the orcs goblins uh running in, you know, riding in on the wargs and I uh, I wish you could see the eagles actually picking thing people up and throwing them down. Like even if they were really basically animated, I think anything is better than than just a dust cloud. You know. The other thing that bugged me about the battle of five armies was Bilbo of Sesame Streeting us going, <laughs> we've got <laughs> elves, dwarfs, humans. Three armies. Oh yeah, yeah we have the fourth army. I'm just like, uh, come on. <laughs> we get it. It's a battle of five armies. Um, and I also don't remember the Eagles being the fifth army for a long time. I was like, what is the fifth army? What I can't remember. What is the fifth army? And then it's like the Eagles. I was like, is that is that what it was? Are the Eagles even the fifth army in the newer version? I, yeah, I don't think they are. Like I can't. Like I can't. It's been a while since I've read, so I don't remember what the fifth army was. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember either. I guess we're going to suggest it now. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I remember Odom the, will be back. <laughs> I remember the, the, the last movie in the trilogy being the worst, which was the Battle of the Five Armies. Yeah, I, that's I, because I, I specifically remember uh, Legolas defying gravity to yes. jump hey, going up rocks. those rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Peter Jackson got a little too Peter Jackson on the, the last one, and that's why it was the worst. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of that during the new series, like uh, going down the river. Like he yeah. got two uh, Peter Jackson. Yes, he did. Where he just like that. that's it. During that, that too. <laughs> I know this is supposed to be a live action, but let's make it a cartoon instead. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, then, back to this one. <laughs> yeah, back to this. One. Sorry, keep uh, getting distracted. Did you guys appreciate the difference between the forest elves and like the higher up elves in this movie? Because when you look at the newer trilogy, it's really difficult to distinguish between forest elf and the high elves. And I, th- I was really appreciative of them making such a drastic difference between the two different races, yeah. I guess you could say. Although I thought, I thought they went a little too far. Like, Oh really? I, yeah. Cause like, I feel like even wood elves are still better looking than, I mean, these <laughs> oh, wood elves look looking, more like, huh? like Dude, they look like the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> right? no, these oh my gosh, you're right. Like they did. They looked like the Grinch or Goblins. They weren't far from the Goblins. Yeah. So yeah. I was just like, uh, an elf is still looks better than a Goblin. I mean, Goblins are, you know, 
mutated elves. Right. There's a little bit of lore in between that, right? It's kind of yeah. murky, but I get it. I get it. So I, I actually didn't really like... Like, I do like that there's a difference between high elves and wood elves looking, but they went too far, I think, on the wood elves to make them look too grungy. That's fair. Listen to too much Nirvana, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> um. All right, I think that's all the points I had. Um. Anyone else uh, have anything else they want to mention? I do not. All right. I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm fine too. So, uh, at the end of the episode, we always give our uh, our summary of our thoughts and then uh, a rating out of five. And, of course, the person who suggests the movie goes first, which is myself, so I will go first. Uh, the Hobbit from 1977. Um, I really love this movie. I think it's animated really really well i love the interactions with bilbo and smaug and Gollum and the rest of the scenes in the movie that are also memorable uh, i feel like the first half of the movie goes by pretty fast and i feel like there were some things that needed more fleshing out and then i don't know if i guess i should have mentioned this earlier but I don't, did you guys notice that there were a few scenes where you would expect a sound to happen, like, you know, Smaug opens his mouth or something happens, but you, mm, there's no sound effect or anything like that? Did yeah, you guys... there, was a few, there was a few scenes where, like, there should have been sound effects and there wasn't. Yeah, so that's that's one but of those things that I noticed, and I was like, that's kind of weird. They kind of left something out there. Um, but all in all, very enjoyable movie. I, I would recommend this over the Hava trilogy any day, and uh, I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five. All right, uh, Odom, you want to go next? Um, well, this was the first time I actually heard of the 1977 version of it, and as a whole, it, it was really quite charming. Honestly, it I, I really love the music, um, like how how they played with the lyrics and made that that folk kind of uh, kind of sound. I also liked a lot of the consistency with the animation, how detailed it was. Um, a lot of the interactions between uh, the different races were were pretty great, in my opinion. Uh, the the difference between the the elves that we just discussed, um, I, I liked it. You know, it showed high elves were high, mighty, and nice, and wood elves were a bit, like we said, grungy, maybe a little bit more uh, less, you know, accepting. <laughs> so there there was a lot of character in each race. There was a lot of characters in all the characters. And a lot of the characters changed. And that's what I really liked about this movie. Um, I think there was only one drawback, and that was that, that Battle of the Five Armies. And that was the only thing. So I think for a full rating, um, 1 to 5, I would probably give it uh, a 3.5. Okay. Say right. you want to go, or you want me to go? Oh, I can go. It's fine. Um, I, don't, I don't have much more to add than what you guys have already said. Um as far as like following the book, um, you know, like I said, Fire followed it pretty well, but it did cut some, some things here and there, and some of the choices, like the battle, were a little bit of a letdown. But overall, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, I'd give it a three point five as well. Um, I don't have much to add to it either. I like how it like sums up the story, unlike uh, the Peter Jacksons, where they add all the extra drama and like all the you know CGI and all the fancy stuff. So uh, watching that actually made me, or watching this movie actually made me understand the story a little more. Um, so uh, from all that, and then what we talked about, the animation, the music, and the troll song, or the goblin song, still catchy. <laughs> I'll probably be singing that one for a while. Um, I'll give it three and a half. And uh, Coco said he was going to give this one a 1.5 out of 5. Oh, I'm not wow. surprised. Um, he He's too young. <laughs> so maybe, maybe uh, next episode he can kind of share why a 1.5, uh, he gave it a 1.5. But uh, That's well, like the lowest ranking out of all movies. God, well, I <laughs> out gave, of any of us. Well, no, I, Shrek, I, I think, got lower. Yeah, I, I, I gave Shrek, Shrek forever lower. after a 1. So. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I think even Coco gave Shrek a 1. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, good job, guys. We did, we, did it, we did it. We did it. I... I I, I to continue with what Nick was saying, like having all those green screens in the new Hobbit movie 
really took you out of that movie. Yeah, yeah immersion lost for sure. Yeah, you Absolutely. go back and watch the original trilogy. It's all like uh, where were they? Like New Zealand or something like that. They were filming in New Zealand on location, and mm-hmm. then you can even see in like the bonus features for the Hobbit movies where. Uh, Ian McKellen is just kind of falling asleep with all these green, blue screens around him, green screens around him, and yeah. it's just like nothing interesting to keep you active. And it's, it's it's kind of it's kind of disappointing and also kind of sad to see that kind of stuff happen because the original trilogy just looks so good and it feels so genuine. And then you watch the Hobbit trilogy and you're like, well, what, what, you know, I, I don't understand why why is it not working? Why is it not meshing correctly? Right. Well, even like looking at the new trilogy, you know, like caring about it just sounds like, oh, yeah, I can dig with this, you know, knowing, like you said, the the actual Lord of the Rings movie. And then, you know, Unexpected Journey was all right, but then it just gets worse, like it takes off. And like I said, that breaking point was Legolas defying gravity. (laughs) I will, anytime someone says The Hobbit, I will literally think of that moment. That is the first thing I think of too when you say (laughs) The Hobbit movies. I go, oh, Legolas defying gravity. Yep. So dumb. I don't know. I didn't like the dwarf elf love story in the. Oh, yeah. That was. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. That was... yeah. And that that one they completely added and that's not even in the like, you know, similar I can't even say the word. The other Tolkien stuff. Yeah. Right. I wanna know why. Like why did they feel that? Why did they feel they had to add something to a story that is so successful, you know? I don't try to they were trying to sells. reach a broader yeah. audience, I guess. Romance sells or something. Yeah. Sex sells. Something like that. But sex. there was no sex, so I guess I guess we were <laughs> I guess we were okay. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see that. I don't know. All right. So, um, Nick, you have a movie to recommend. Okay. I am introducing a new genre here. We are going to be watching something from horror slash thriller slash mystery. Ooh. All right. So this movie came out in 2019. I wanted to see it in theaters for the longest time. And the movie I am choosing is Brightburn. So, uh, uh, really? All right. (laughs) So it's directed by David Yurovesky and uh, gives some writing credits here to the Guns brother, Brian and Mark Gunn. Uh, A little bit about this movie. Uh, After a difficult struggle with fertility, Terry Breyers, the mother, dreams of motherhood come true with the arrival of a mysterious baby boy. Brandon appears to be everything Tori and her husband, Kyle, ever wanted. A bright, talented, and curious about the world. But as Brandon nears puberty, powerful darkness manifests within him, and Tori becomes consumed by terrible doubts about her son. Once Brandon begins to act on his twisted urge, those closest to him find themselves in grave danger. So this, mm-hmm. also this movie is known as like an evil Superman. Yeah. So, oh, that movie. Yeah. So it's, uh, I guess, a uh, evil Superman. Yeah. So, your thoughts? So <laughs> tells me Tay well, has already Tay, seen Tay this. already seen it. And it <laughs> no, I, like, I didn't. Uh, see, I was interested until I saw one scene, and it's just they went over the top in trying to make it extra gory or something, and it was just ugh, it was too much for me to handle. I guess we'll find out. Odom, many thoughts about the uh, Brightburn? Dude, it's interesting. I always like getting the uh, different perspective in any superhero movie, or not superhero, but any you know kind of mutant or anything with different powers or anything like that. Because we all we all see like goody goody things, but this is a person or this is a a being that that doesn't see the good. You know, it's like they they let the bad overtake, and this is what happens. I, I mean, I love seeing a different perspective. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. So it's very no, interesting. I, yeah, I agree with you there. It's produced by Sony Pictures Entertainment, but I don't think it has anything to do with DC, right? No. No, I, no. I, I think it's like a separate story. Um, but yeah, uh, where can you find it? Uh, uh, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Amazon, <laughs> Google Play, Apple, YouTube, obviously DVD, Blu-ray, and also PlayStation Store. I believe Xbox as well is, is all the same stuff. So those are the places you can get it. And also Fandango and Voodoo. Don't worry about those two. It does say Hulu, but I think you need like some add-on to watch it on Hulu, which oh, really? is really yeah, I don't see really it on my list. dark. 
<laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, I looked on Hulu earlier, but it said like you need to access like additional add-ons or something like. So you got to pay more money for the subscription. Yeah, figures, much. bastards. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see like a uh, evil Superman. Yeah, yeah, I think um DC Animation they are putting out a uh, the the Soviet Union version of Superman, Mother Russia version of Superman, like yeah, a, a movie about Russia. It. Yeah, uh, which I was planning on picking that up because uh, Death of Superman was such a great animated movie, and the follow up to it was really good. And I'm interested to see uh, more Superman. So the, here's another take on it as well, <laughs> the bright part. <laughs> All right. So All right. if you don't want to be spoiled, or or if you want to join the conversation for Brightburn from 2019, make sure you watch the movie before then. Um, yeah, should that's a that's it. That, that's a wrap, boys and girls. Girl. Awesome. Well, I, the audience. Uh, about, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, big, big thanks to our friend Odom K for, for coming onto the podcast. Like I said, uh, he has a great Twitch channel, lots of art streams, some gaming in there. Watch him shit himself as he plays the Leon version of Resident Evil 2 eventually. Uh, Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Order um, him some uh, underwear while you're at it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. I'll oh. take donations. He doesn't have any more okay. toilet paper left because of the uh, the virus. So. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> He's playing on uh, one of those porta potty seats. <laughs> <laughs> I actually mentioned that I have one of those, but I don't really. Oh, but you know, there you go. <laughs> <It's> proven. No. <laughs> uh, uh, Odom, what are you working on right now? What's what's going on? Uh, right now, um, the main project I'm working on right now, it's a Kickstarter for, it's kind of like a D&D zine, like an 80s D&D, uh, D&D magazine, so I've, oh. I've been doing some sketches for that. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Um, other than that, just commissions for, for emotes and layouts, and I think a portrait <laughs> that I haven't touched yet, but don't tell them. <laughs> If they hear this, they're going to know. <laughs> oh, gosh. O- Odom won't share it on his socials just in case. <laughs> That's right. He'll be like, uh, at, at about the 40-minute mark, you can turn it off. We just bullshit around. You know? <laughs> Cut it out, man. Cut it out, Yemi. Cut it out. All right. Um, yeah, so we'll reconvene, and hopefully Coco will be feeling better by the time that the two weeks comes around. Uh, I'll let him know what movie it is, of course. And we'll come back and talk about Brightburn. Uh, so yeah, uh, I am Yummy the Ferret, and I've been here with Grady Waffle, Animation, Odom K, and we are Film Freaks with a Z. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>